Well, we're back. It's Showtech Show. It's Sunday night on the Lone Star. That means your week has come to the fun point. Thanks for joining us once again live, everybody. Uh, thanks for sort of joining us, Scott. <laughs> That's uh, some pretty Sunday good Monday. promo work we've got going on there. Oop. Welcome to Grape Fest. <laughs> this is, I'm haunted. Like my arm, In my arm. Grapevine. The ghost of inebriation <laughs> future, Scott. Yeah. Wow, man. Look, Grapevine. So, Sick. pro tip... When you're working on a green screen, don't wear green. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's a new it's a new technology. So, how's that working for you? But <laughs> I will say this: when the green screen mm -hmm. actually goes away and we get our graphic back, mm -hmm. I look thirty pounds lighter. There you go. Yeah. What <laughs> are you doing? It's working. That is a benefit. <laughs> <laughs> that bike riding is working. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so did you guys have a good week? What's going on in uh, in your world? Uh. Uh, uh, we opened a show. Opened a show right? Yeah, and what is that c Texas classic you guys are working on? And tell us about where we can see it. It's the Tuna Christmas. Tuna Christmas. Love it. It's up in Denton at the Campus Theater. Runs two weekends. You can see me because I'm stage managing. <laughs> and you can Surprise! see her. Well, I'm upstairs. You can't show, see me. You can. Come on by after the show. You can. Bring flowers. I'm not really here. Oh, yeah. Flowers would be awesome. <laughs> I think to m I think next week we wear unit suits. Just all green. Yeah, we'll just we'll just pare back how much uh, <laughs> talent we've got on screen until it's just like <laughs> tiny little faces. Hello. Just Hello. floating eyeballs. will like face paint you green. Hello, everyone. Blink, 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 blink. <laughs> so yeah, we had Tech Week this week. Yes, we did. Opened the show, and next week we're. I'm pretty light <sighs> next week. It's funny, when you grab his ass like that, your hand kind of disappears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. You're tickling him. All right, well, uh, let's see. Uh, are you guys uh, interested in doing some news? Sure. Well, I think that makes it time for next. Okay. <laughs> oh, it sure is. Well, um, first up this week, let's see. I've got actually, so I didn't do any show. Hey, prep, before right? we next, sure. Did you realize that the ship that Jordan's on is the one that caught fire and? Oh uh, well, yeah. You told me that the stranded uh, passengers for like a week with overflowing poop toilets and yes. Uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> he's on the train. Well, okay. Here's that my theory like on fun, that. Fun, Jordan. <laughs> That's probably the safest boat to be on. Because <laughs> <laughs> whatever that was, they they clearly fixed it before Buddy, they set you sail. you know they fixed it. Yeah, so all the rest of the fleet? Oh, good luck with that. But <laughs> yes. So, uh, so next. let's uh, get into okay, some news. Now, now we can get Real it. news. Uh, it's Christmas time, so I thought I'd kick us off with some fun uh, Christmas light show stuff. I, uh, I don't have any. Yeah. Let me see if I can. Uh. Anyway. So anyway, this is something I desperately want to do to my house, but I have not had a chance to. But here is what a family in San Antonio has done. Johnson's Family Light Show. Merry Christmas. I'll just let it roll for a little bit. This is, uh, it was all the rage yesterday on Facebook, so I thought I'd go ahead and tie it into what we're doing because it's very light programming intensive, and even the audio, they custom mixed all of this. It's... It's wow. dubstep just for their got some choice drops built into it. Uh, I think you'll hear I'm a. I'm uh, totally using um, some dubstep in the show for Tina Christmas. Really? Yep. That's an interesting take on that show. <laughs> it's only in one spot, but you'll have to see it to find out. Okay, I will. That's uh, that sounds <laughs> intriguing to me. But anyway, have you? I mean, I. <sighs> We're gonna have the best looking house in town, Russ. I love it. <laughs> That's something I've just always kind of wanted to do uh, with my own home, but just, you know, time and kids. I'm lucky if I get uh, some Put candles up timer, in the window. So it goes off right yeah. at the right time. Yeah, and do some, yeah, right? Yeah, just blow everybody. Because I, I, I think that would be really perfect now because I've always done such a phone it in job with my house. If I just subtly installed this stuff and nobody <laughs> knew and then just blew up the neighborhood, everybody like, oh my God. 
but I mean, uh, what would be cool if if someone did this for Halloween <laughs> and did this as Halloween, dude? Actually, this Somebody is this sort this of thing place. is much more suited to Halloween, and Halloween displays have gotten pretty advanced lately. I, so yeah, there's so in Plano where my dad used to live, um, we would always go trick or treating around his neighborhood, and there was one house who always like goes full out every year. And they have a different theme every year. And so, like, one year it was, like, horror movies. And then the next year it was Nightmare Before mm-hmm. Christmas. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, I, uh, but I've always, it seems like I've got, I've got the skill sets. I've got access to people, at least, with the equipment. Uh, I need to do this. Oh, man, we could do crap loads of stuff here. It's just time. I know, yeah. It's like we're too busy uh, paying for all this garbage. Money. <sighs> but someday yeah. when I'm... Rich and famous. Rich. Yeah, I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, me. I didn't put my font up earlier, but nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. Um, so, but I, I'll let me go ahead and say next on that. And uh, there's more. That was just kind of a little. Next. Uh, next. That was just kind of an intro. Um, but um, another big uh. I guess I'll say trend with the Christmas light decorating. Have you seen these laser star fields that people are doing? Yes. So uh, I don't know if I've got any pictures of this. This is a uh, news article I found from KPTV talking about the hazards. Uh, This is Fox 12 in Oregon. uh, And a lot of people covering stories like this this year. But uh, people setting up these these light shows in the... Oh, here's a nice commercial. But anyway. Awesome. (laughs) Check out the uh, Banner Furniture Outlet there in beautiful Oregon. Uh, this was totally, I could totally be a, a B and yeah, I move need to. on from this, but I won't. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, the bit is they set up these little uh, projector, uh, Starfield projectors. They're basically laser dots, uh, and they just oh, scatter over your entire house instead of, uh, you know, instead having to string up individual lights, lights or whatever. Uh, but the issue with that, and that's something, like, uh, me immediately my wife and I were like, dude, we could totally do that. But we're right next to Alliance Airport over here. And oh, that's what the yeah. FAA is finding a lot of problems with. Are their people aren't focusing these. They they aren't uh, matting these. And they're just basically blanketing the sky with laser beams <laughs> and hitting. So, like, the errant handheld pointer that would, like, uh, you know, maliciously or accidentally catch a pilot. Now there's, Ooh, like, their literally right mind would do that. hundreds. Well, probably the guy with the... The uh, what was it? The thousand watt LED. He might. <laughs> like he the he side might. Of a mountain. <laughs> he might. Yeah. Give give away that. But anyway, um, so cool trend, and you can't. You're really Hold hard on, for us to have find have those you things. Seen the Star Wars lighted house yet? No. The Star Wars Christmas one. Should I uh, search it? Do the Googs on that. All right. You yeah. guys talk about. And you'll yourselves. know that it's the right one because he's got like six clay oh. packy sharpies on the roof of his house. Speaking of Star Wars news. Oh, Star oh, okay. Wars. Star Wars. Star comes Wars. Out on Wait, hold on, hold on. We got to do this right, damn it. You can't just you can't just <laughs> jump on and 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 just take interrupt. over the show. <laughs> 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 All right. Star Wars. Star Wars. All right, Star Wars. Well, I didn't want to next it cuz it's on the same topic. Oh, that's true. That's not really a true next. That's a It's a mini next. It's a yeah. fake next. <laughs> it's like No, go ahead. What you got? What? Oh, I was what? just going to say, Star Wars opens Friday. I really want to go see it. That's all you wanted to say? Yeah. Next! <laughs> that, well, okay, that's a good uh, entremont no. for Star Wars here to coin a term. Oh, my God, just so many ads. So many, hey, it's a poopery ad, Welcome actually. Nothing is worse this, than up the I will actually uh, oh, show I this. this. I love this ad. Yeah. We do uh, We do swear by this here at the Showtech Show in the Lone Star. <laughs> Have you ever oh, seen did you find it? Yes. It was called Best of Star Wars from ABC. Uh, I don't know. I, it's on YouTube. Yeah, it was like Best of Star Wars Music Light Show. Mine has a uh, parenthesis that says, uh, okay, poop really. Okay, and we can mystery science theater this one because it's brilliant. Ooh. Oh, I need to set that shot up. That's, a, that's a, my next. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, show it. How is sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was I was mesmerized. <laughs> <laughs> now wait, it, Epic. Gets, it gets better. It gets better. This I has got love, to be the best one I've seen yet. I just love the moving lights on the roof. Yeah. Just shooting into the sky. <laughs> that 
can't be legal. People. Yeah, I know. If those lasers were giving the <laughs> FAA problems, that's those way over the line. Those are definitely giving them problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, man. Honestly, though, the lighting package on that house has got to be worth more than the house. Uh, like, a lot of time you see these setups on, like, big two stories. Oh, my Lord. The guitar is brilliant, yeah. but wait for the lightsaber fight. <laughs> oh, I will. I want to watch this whole thing now. This is the best time Are of year. Are singing on the house? Are there people in the windows? Like, look at the roof and they just the chorus. It was, like, right above the garage. This, this is the happiest time of the year for Showtex. Because you could do crap like this. Oh. <laughs> you, you notice I'm just sitting Get here in awe out. going, oh. Yeah. And all this... Uh, I wonder what their alert <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh, yes. I'm probably going to get this video pulled from YouTube. But anyway, Hi. what a great idea uh, incorporating the the uh, lightsaber show into the, <laughs> the movers and the sound effects because otherwise that would be <laughs> a hard to use audio track. Yes, oh, no, very. No. Sorry, girls. Look at that hair. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wow. Dude. I don't know what to tell you. It's uh it's beginning to look like a runway down the right <laughs> side. Yeah. It's weird. I've got like this is not traditional male pattern baldness. <laughs> this is uh <laughs> Yeah. Thank anyway, you, that's Danica. it. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Uh Love ya. So that was Ooh. my uh that was kind of to talk about the FAA and you know whenever we talk about the FAA on the Showtech show it's time that we talk about drones right yes. Isn't it rich This track is just awesome Are we It is awesome there? And I'm awesome <laughs> Me here sort of awesome. connected to it tangentially Everybody's awesome Yeah and you in goodly amount of drone news that, today. That scene right there. Uh, Send it touching, isn't it? I like <laughs> this one. The old it lady, reminds her me first of drone. the meme with Julie Andrews from Sound of Music with the guns. <laughs> <laughs> just spinning around and shooting. Well, Anyways, your drone. Sorry. Your drone uh, no, no. That's that's the kind of derailing <laughs> I've come to expect here. So uh, we did the, what was it? Uh, let me launch this for you guys we're gonna show a visual thing but we covered this story on show tech show about the uh the anti-drone yes. that came out uh, i think that thing is fabulous i want one yeah if you're a wireless audio person too i think this would be a great way to just <laughs> give those people hell it's just like a very uh aimed interference device that basically <laughs> causes a drone to freak out <laughs> and land itself but anyway uh so that said the japanese police have kicked it up a notch uh, they have in, they actually have their own uh, drone police force, which uh, is kind of epic. And uh, they've recently developed an anti-drone drone. God damn it, ads. <laughs> and I'm going to wax poetic on that for a moment, for another 15 seconds or so. Now, check this thing out. Wow, he uh, went all the way to the GD. He didn't even just say, you damn it. It was the post. Yeah, we can fix that in post. <laughs> And now we're going to buffer for a bunch because apparently uh, a lot of uh, right-wing conservatives at AT&T. Check this bad boy out, though. So it's got a big uh, net that it deploys. It's not a quadcopter. It's a hexacopter, and it's a <laughs> beefy bastard. Like, you can hear this thing compared to the one that they, the test drone that they come out, they send up against it. Uh, but this is a way that uh, we might actually see police departments controlling drone flights and things like that between the ground-based <laughs> weapons, the air-based <laughs> weapons. Isn't I'm that? I'm I'm you gonna die! Ooh, doesn't that just look like some kind of like <laughs> hawk going after a sparrow yes. or something? Just like, oh shit! And this one's even got like little rotor guards on it, so it was still able to get netted and taken wow. down. But uh, so illicit drone operators. Last week we talked about the um, the uh, new drone uh, F, uh, regulations the FAA has put out, and it's always kind of been our thing. Like, what are they going to do about it? I guess. Well, I guess we now. Don't. Now there are consequences. So yeah, <laughs> that's all I have on the what? drone news. But I just thought that was. Uh, what, what do you guys think about? 
Are you ever going to get into that? <laughs> Recreationally, professionally, Scott? Anything? <sighs> no. No? Yeah, me either, because like I said, I'd, I, I wouldn't do any better. I would sit there with, with the I'll copter stick a, to catch the drones. That would be fun. I'll stick a GoPro on a mountain bike, but I have no need for a drone. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some good some bike footage. I don't know I haven't done that yet. Mountain bike so we can watch it fall. Actually, that's one of the first applications I saw for drone was some of those self-following uh, things. They you just wear like a little thing and it chases you around and films you. And that would be a fabulous idea if you could cap the height, <laughs> like trees and stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that your drone can go. You know, different things like that. Like no more than a hundred feet. Boom. Yeah. You're not going to get into flight paths then unless you're in a takeoff and landing area. And if you're there, you may as well be arrested. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. You shouldn't yeah. be mountain biking there. But anyway, that's just my uh, token drone news. Yay! Uh, thank you for joining us. Next! I hate drones. <laughs> you do hate drones. <laughs> but this is good. I've got like a whole series. I just kind of want to give myself some credit because I started off with the Christmas lights because it's our Christmas special, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went into uh, Christmas lights and the FAA. And then I went from FAA to FAA and drones, as we're wont to do. Are we ever going to see the rest of that well. video? That was it. Wait, w oh, the rest of the, the uh, laser one? Yeah, or the Star Wars video? Yes. All right, yeah, we can do that. Fine. Star Wars. I mean, we should just hold he up cares more about those damn and drones and than, than lightsabers. Light. They really do. I was saying we should have our own lightsaber. Oh, we could. And then he could add it in. And post. Oh, my gosh. Our trip. To Mohican, yeah, we could have lightsaber fights on mountain bikes. Yes, yes, I, and the loser has to jump in the lake. <laughs> Although right. during that time, sorry, I didn't mean to distract ah, from. That's so awesome. <laughs> Drink it in. It's good they make it <laughs> into one track, though. They would have issues with me. I love this bit, too, because there's... What, what system they put in. Well, typically, you've got, like, a little, like, pirate radio station you set up, little low-power FM thing, so people just driving through can yep. tune in. And yeah. I yeah. love that. That's so... That is my wheelhouse of nerd right there. Did you guys see the... Uh, this is brilliant. Let this it is snow? just awesome. Did we see what? The Let It Snow video. This is actually uh, way better, though. Yeah, um, Star Wars always beats. Well, this is just well done. I mean, all the little individual lighting elements they've got. Oh, yeah. It's like you're watching an orchestra. Oh. Don't quite understand the drum set in a driveway. But I haven't figured that part out yet, either. I wonder really if the they do a mix. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cantina! <laughs> I didn't realize the piano had individual keys. That's oh. awesome. <laughs> How does that stuff not get stolen from your yard? Because those little laser things are getting stolen like left and right. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's my awesome. god! <laughs> Pyro. All right. <laughs> See, that's a good idea. Having the uh, oh. the hazer going so you can get those beams oh this is awesome <laughs> i just I, I every time i see this it makes me cry i also like uh, this must have been a news story because they filmed it from multiple camera angles oh it had to be because now typically when you see these things they just film it from one shot which is you know fine because you get the whole thing but i really like the uh i feel like you're watching a show yeah so I, I totally shared something on Facebook, Star Wars related. Okay. Um, so there's this meme or this vine going around of how people are going to wake up on Friday. Oh, Star yeah. Star Wars and it's Vader the coming Vader up with rise. them. Very <laughs> <laughs> I would so hope you'd be a little bit more excited than that. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to wake up, bam, in full Star Wars garb. I might, uh, <laughs> we should have just closed on this. Right. Yeah. And done. See y'all later. Oh Good my gosh, lord. This is awesome. Well, see, while we're talking and yapping, we could find something else to close on. That's this is brilliant. Ooh, I wonder if, if this house Smack. has Indiana Jones. Huh. Similar, similar score. Yeah. Oh, the John Williams. 
Well, that's, I mean, we're, we're probably already be getting takedown notices left and right just for covering this, but uh, <laughs> uh, fair use and commentary, right? This is uh, Safe Harbor. We're discussing the uh, lighting applications. You said these are clay packies he's got up on the roof, right? Yes. Clay packy Sharpies. Damn, son. Yeah, I was wondering if they were Sharpies. Oh, my God. Local airport's got to be pissed, though. It probably Bravo. Like you, you know, you it know, might. the next door neighbor that was in the same contest as them was sitting there going, "Fuck." Yeah, Damn it. I had a animated Damn. Rudolph. Son of a bitch. I did. <laughs> this reminds me of how the Grinch stole Christmas, Jim Carrey version. Goddamn candy Where canes on my front lawn ain't gonna make it. <laughs> Where uh, <laughs> Cindy Lou, whose mom is hanging up her lights, or trying to find all these different knickknacks to hang um, on her house, and then the you know the popular girl next door is like. Oh, I just got this brand new cannon, and she shoots <laughs> all the Christmas lights under her house. <laughs> and it's awesome. And done. That's how a pro does it. And done. Well, Danica, I did. Uh, we're coming to you live, folks, on uh, the 13th of December in the year of our Lord, 2015. I wanted to wish you a happy Audio Engineers Day. Did you celebrate doing anything Woo-hoo! special for uh, 1212 yesterday? <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funny. I, I called the show with sound key. There you go. One, two. So one, you, two. You celebrated one, two, appropriately. Yeah, you, one, two. you can always tell the difference between a lighting designer and a sound designer because a sound designer can Wait. never count past two. This You need this shirt, but <sighs> you need a sound, a sound gal. Yeah, but uh, I, I thought do. that was very I mean, apropos. This is what we do until we don't do it or it gets done wrong. Really could be said for a lot of uh, tech positions, I think. But, oh, uh, yeah, definitely. More so it with you, just because it's so subliminal. I don't know. Well, um, that was actually the talked about when Matilda came through town, because the way they mixed Matilda, Matilda combined with their accents, it was very hard to understand what they were saying. And so a lot of controversy came up, and people were upset and wanted their money back because they couldn't hear and they didn't know what was going on. Um, so that kind of. Just I want my money Those back. Was it just you. really heavy accents? It wasn't... Uh, it was bad mix. It was bad oh, okay. mix. Very bad mix. It was, and, and that's when the discussion came up of sound designer versus sound engineer, what their responsibilities are. Yeah. That fun stuff. Board up versus... Uh, because sound, sound designing is more than sound design. I will let you yeah, know but right now. I, you know, th- there's, there's times that you can sit there and blame that sound engineer that's running it, and then there's times like Matilda where you just go, dude, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> what, I, do you have time to talk about uh, critical flaws in that uh, design that, that led to the unintelligibility? You know what? <laughs> Here's the and thing. then maybe comment on my own unintelligibility <laughs> as I try to pronounce that word. Sound engineering and sound designing is probably the toughest job out of all of them. Oh, yeah, I would definitely agree. It's the hardest job. Because of the fact that, like, yeah. like when I toured, we would tour in different venues. Like, I did 16 shows in a row in arenas where it sounded great. Then I went to the Cobalt the Center one, in Detroit, different. and yeah. the back wall was all glass, and it was a hollow floor. So I mean everything from your venue space to the humidity to how many people yeah even yeah atmosphere well, I mean it affects the everything. Uh, 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 the Cobalt Center is 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 hollow underneath it's it's only got a, a four inch slab of concrete okay and then underneath it's hollow so when you start your show all of the base starts to rumble under the underneath floor, the floor yeah. so literally what i ended up having to do through that whole show i had to gate the microphones like a bastard i mean so yeah. much so and then i was telling the 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 people that were in the show stop talking every 10 seconds just to let it settle wait wow to let the rumble stop yeah it's and the funny thing was that the union crew that was there working with us he they walked up to us they were like that's the best that room's ever sounded and i was like <laughs> You could have at least fucking a warned warning us would have been nice. Yeah, a holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Like I, humble brag, I consider myself a pretty smart dude when it comes to technology. You know, not necessarily the most artistic of the bunch by any stretch of the imagination, but like I understand electricity, I understand you know lighting physics and basics thing, you know, like that. Like I get it, but audio is the one field that is probably my least 
amount of confidence just because there's so much depth to it. I think you there's could so study audio for decades and just never be a master. Like you can you can learn a lot and you can you know and definitely trial by fire and you learn by experience. But I mean it's <laughs> there's just so much. I don't think the human brain can actually comprehend everything that can go wrong in a live audio environment. I mean what one of one of my f- favorite Drop sound Ooh. guys to work with. <laughs> um, Don't drop it. Jesus, no. One of my favorite sound guys to work with, his name is Grover Washington. His his father was a very famous musician. And Grover and I have done probably 15 shows together. I love working with this guy because he understands sound like a bad... I mean, he's just... He's a badass. <laughs> okay. And... uh, uh you learn a lot of stuff. Like anytime I'm on a show with him, I, I try to do monitors or something like that so that I can learn a little yeah. bit more from this guy. But but he'll be the first one to tell you there's a huge difference between a front of a house. I have a question. That's not Grover. What is it? I think oh. it is Grover. Uh, there's there's <laughs> a big difference between a front of house and operator and a modern world, and a modern op- world operator. operator. And even someone mixing for uh, yeah. TV? Mm-hmm. And, for and that's that's what where that's married, where I think Matilda got there. hurt is that they had a sound designer yes, yes. who wasn't there. They had a sound what engineer running that who walked yeah, into a, a space. Show. He walks Good. into a space and he's like, "Holy Anything shit! Else? What oh, the yeah, hell do I do?" And and that's where. Not having really qualified people uh-huh. kind of yeah. screws you. Yeah. You know, they they, they, they haven't learned it. Yeah. Me walking into the Cobalt well, Center, if I hadn't done this uh, for as long as I had, I would have been booted. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's when, marriage, you know, proper review, hugging, especially yeah, friends, in a show hugging, with heavy stuff. accent, is yeah. so important. Because well, if you EQ a mic wrong or if you EQ a person wrong, it's just. It can be bad, and you can't understand them. And then people are going to sit and there and be like, what did they just say? I heard what they were saying, but I don't know what they were saying. There's different EQ for different shows. Like, oh, I, yeah. I EQ totally different for a concert than I do for theater. And uh, Well, and I would EQ a play differently than I do a musical. Yeah, like, like if, if, I'm doing, if I'm doing theater, 300's gone. All the way down. <laughs> Yeah, when 6K? we're in a certain Whoa. convention center, there's 306, 630. Bye-bye. Bye. If I'm doing a concert, those come back up, but I boost the bass and bring the volume down. So they get the thumb. Danica, if you, well, actually, both of you are equally qualified, but I would love to do some, uh, I, I would love to hear it at least. Maybe you can do it as show topics. Maybe you can just sit down and explain slowly like I'm stupid, but... I would like to do some audio basics, some principles of audio really things. I, there's just so many little interesting. Do you hear us? You really. I, I'm sorry. Could you speak up? The microphone is not <laughs> working. I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, I'm sorry. I'm gated so much. That Your face. You can hear me. You're not gated enough. We can still hear you. <laughs> but um, well, that'd be where you do a rim shot if you had an audio guy. But anyway, um, where the hell were we? That was yeah, quite a rap hole we went down there. Because you pissed, we were still, pissed God off. <laughs> we were still in the next series, weren't we? Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's... I guess okay. we were. All right. Um, Are you kidding? We could do a whole show on sound. I, yeah, because well, sound I, is I mean, so, so hard. Well, that's almost what I'm saying is maybe not a show. Maybe do try to sprinkle around some particular topics about like just different principles. One. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> it's interesting to me. I could There's a, a wealth that I could learn, I'm well, sure. Well, the so. physics behind sound is really cool and really interesting. We'll have to have David on the show. Physics of sound is totally he, different. He knows, like, any scientific thing that you need to know about sound, he knows. As he a, I, I used to have a guy that I would work with all the time who, who lived by the Yamaha Sound Reinforcement Handbook, and I'm like, throw that away. <laughs> <laughs> that come with the, the board when you just, buy it? Just throw that away unless you're using all Yamaha equipment <laughs> thrown away. <laughs> Because uh, this is a Midas board, and no, it's going mean, to work totally really, different. I mean, the, the physics behind how sound waves work and the how physics, that affects the equipment that you're using is The physics crazy. are always going to be the same. Oh, just, yeah. just, like, just like people that, that... It's so intriguing, though. ...that know sound understand the EQ. How many times have you walked in when somebody just did the smiley God face? Dang it. Ugh. Here we go. Here's the smiley face. 
I'm like, yeah. How did that work for you again? How did that sound, people? Because that. Oh, looks yeah, like people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, science. And there is a huge science oh, to this, though. That reminds me of The Martian of, uh, uh, with uh, Matt Damon, where he's like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. Science, science the shit, shit out of this. this. Yeah. <laughs> Amen, man. What were you going to say? There is a huge, well, there's a huge science to that. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when we would go and, and tour, we would, our rig was a, a KF650 or, or a KF800 PAW uh, rig. And I loved the 650 rig. It was it was a little bit smaller and and all that, but your your cone diameter was totally different than your 850s. Yeah. Obviously. Now, of course, <laughs> those 850s, man. Jeez. Uh, we went into we went into the War, War, Wolstein Center in Cleveland, which is a 10,000 seat arena. Mm-hmm. Those 850s were awesome, man. Now, Amazing what venue space does yeah. for you. Now, then we went back up there like two months later with the 650 rig and couldn't get enough uh, sound to uh, tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sound out there, guys? We can't, can't hear, hear anything. <laughs> On the very top row. <laughs> what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm done rambling. No, that was good. That was good. Solid stuff, and I want to hear more. But yeah. let's talk We tech. can fix that in post. We can fix that in post. <laughs> or <laughs> we can edit that in post. <laughs> Johnny on the spot with that drop. Sorry about that. Let's talk tech. Uh, tell me about Froggy. Fo- Froggy, wait. Froggy's Fog? Oh my gosh, is this stuff incredibly awesome. You can tell that's when it's a paid ad. He always starts his, his <laughs> spots with, oh, my God. So, oh, my God. So, as you all know, I own, I own a, uh, a HC 500 Hazer, and I have the D, DF50. Uh, so, I've got both. Um, Is this the haze have? fluid, a 5-liter jug of Antari haze fluid for the HC 500 runs you 90 bucks. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So I finally started my warranties up on my hazer and all that. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start looking around at different fluids and all hey, this. Wait, you can get affordable. Froggy's fluid was that LDI. So I got to talking to the guys and, and figuring out what was going on. And what they did, they started this company because the president was allergic to certain hazes and yeah, fogs certain and stuff food. like that. So he was like, well, fuck it, I'll just make my own. He goes in, and he's made all of this fog fluid that's organic. So it's actually good for your lungs. It's good for you for your body stuff. and stuff like that. But where I got hooked was instead of me paying $90 for a jug, I'm paying $35. Oh, okay. Much so froggiesfog.com is this place. F-R-O-G-G-Y-S. And... FOG.com. We actually have been running Ribbit. that in my hazer for the past month. Uh, we ran it at, at Mary Poppins. We're running it this week over at, at the Uptown Theater um, all week long. The hazer fluid, I mean, the fluid is just as... as I was going to say, is it as full? And full, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's actually got more volume than, than the Antari is. stuff does. Well, uh, but it holds up, say the least. Like yeah. Well, nice. it holds up. It holds up really nice. The one that I use in my machine is the Houston Haze, uh, which which has really held up really, really good. Because um, there's some that just dissipate yeah. super quick. And they have a DF50 fluid that's just out of this world. Um, it lasts. Its hang time is like two hours. All right. Uh, check this out. Have you guys ever incorporated smells into your fogs yes the scent additives they have this is unreal because i've only that's i only cool. knew I mean, fog came extra. in swamp ass i thought that's all you could get <laughs> that's what extra they have popcorn pumpkin spice cotton candy lime oh, mint yeah, the, they have the, chainsaw uh, sulfur charred awesome. corpse hospital and and, and the, they pump that crap through all day long. and the thing about and this stuff delicious. Is that yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, burnt. The fluid, or uh, you don't need a heater. 
um, the scents will work in a in a water based. Yeah, because uh, I was gonna say the one yeah. at the convention center is all fan based. It's just yeah, it's I mean it's it's just absolutely brilliant that you can now scent. UV snow juice? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm seriously thinking about that for for uh, for some shows next. Thinking about think about it if you did that with the UV LEDs and didn't. Maybe it's time for a career change for me. Like I've always been right? a video guy, but right? you like you've got lighting, you've got sound. Maybe I could be a smell guy. Like I'd be the smell consultant that comes in because that's really I, like the only sense that you don't mess with when you're doing live performance stuff. I think you're already there. I'm the smell guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be your your stink consultant. I think you are definitely in the stink. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> screw you. Hey, very that was cool. That's my though. froggy's fluid that's thing, man. I very cool. That. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, definitely always good to save some money, and it sounds like they've got some legit products. So. Dirt. Dirt cheap, all organic. Go for it, guys. Well, and your uh, low budget lighting news, I guess. Uh, have you guys heard of Hello Twist? This is a uh, here. I'll bring up the full screen on this. But anyway, um, this company makes speakers that screw. They're wireless speakers ah. that screw into light bulbs, and they still have LED lights in them. So for kind of venue lighting and sound, you can basically put wireless audio throughout a... I mean, you probably wouldn't be using this in a stage. There's, a, there's some, too, that... Is it Bluetooth? Uh, no, I think it's like a Wi-Fi kind of thing. There, so is, it's there are some Bluetooth ones, and you can actually control the LED. Yeah. And the cool thing. Uh, from what I was reading this, yeah, <laughs> so it does like AirPlay, which is like Bluetooth on steroids. But it, yeah, it's like a, it's like one of those remotely controllable LEDs, you know, color changing LED, and it's got the integrated speaker. Mm -hmm. And so I'm imagining one of these little drivers isn't going to be anything special. But if every light bulb in every your home was one of these, you've got whole home audio without running any cable, and yeah, it looks cleaner. And the power is built in, uh, in obviously, because you're just screwing it into a receptacle. I just thought that was kind of cool. One of my friends on Facebook posted that. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I've seen a lot of those recently hit the market. I just spent $40 on replacing LEDs <laughs> in my house, and now you're going to show me this shit. Yeah, you could have put those up in the bathroom, <laughs> had a little music in the morning. Well, they're a little bit expensive. A three-pack is $200. Whoa! So I think you did a little bit better on your cost estimates. But um, <laughs> that's not bad. Oh, I mean, oh. and I... I was trying to think of a good show tech application for this probably more consumer grade technology, but maybe like you've got wall sconces in your theaters. I'm thinking porn. No, you do that in post. I did that. In it's perfect. It is that. perfect we for porn. Just turn Sorry. the lights red and let the speakers be the director. All right, a little bit lower. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, for uh, <laughs> I like mean, can you bend over? Oh from our God. first conversation, Danica was talking about kind of her subtle infusions of sound into shows, and if you could maybe have some extra sources scattered about. There's maybe, lube uh, on the table. All right. Next. Next. You guys just don't understand my cheap lights. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nobody understands I mean, me. I totally see what you're saying because I mean, I'm wondering. You know how you you uh, just hang practical. Mm-hmm. What if what you would incorporate those into that? Because then you get... If you could route them. That would be interesting. It would be very interesting. Huh. A little uh, outside-the-box thinking, courtesy of the Lone Star. It also depends on how loud they get. Probably I don't know. I think you should rate loud. them and get a sample. All right. Consider it done. Internet, I'm talking to you. Get me yeah. some... Uh, what, are they, what are they called? Samples. 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 Thank you. No, they these are <laughs> Hello Twist. Because I've liked the idea of these little LED color changer light bulbs yeah, and I'm throwing really a speaker into them. Like, all right. I'm really curious. I don't know. Well, we talked about that weird speaker last week, the induction stuff that oh, went straight the, to glass. So yeah. I'm kind of I'm, I'm in that mode of thinking speakers. outside the box. On, uh, what the? Hell audio. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking the of the upstairs audio tenants, weird man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why we got the noise gates, <laughs> folks. Yeah. Um. Wow. So, Danica, did you want to talk about a very special 90th birthday for yes, Mr. I Dick did. Van Dyke? Well, as we all know, Dick Van Dyke had his 90th birthday, and to like celebrate, there was a flash mob, and he joined in. Weekend. So, let's take a look. Let's go to take. This is kind of cool. So, yeah, apparently. And they... he sang along, which was so cute. Is it to Mary Poppins? Yeah. You've seen. 
Again, this show is never going to last on YouTube. They're going to pull this thing down so fast. Yeah, maybe if, maybe if the internet can't hear or Dick! But they might not watch all, all, it all the way through. That's a yeah. dick! For more, check out YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that was just there already. It's in, this is in the Grove in L.A., so kind of a seedy neighborhood, I'm guessing. I don't see Dick. He's right there. He's wearing his cape. He's on the uh, set of the Batman vs. Superman. He's finishing up some principal. Yeah, that's what's cool about this, is he was really engaged and interactive with this group of people that just showed out to show him, showed up to show him some love. Yeah. It's just a really sweet moment. So the next time you want to endear a celebrity to you, don't just ask them for their autograph. <laughs> Do a Construct flash a flash mob. mob. I mean, come on, guys. Step it up a notch. Stick Van Dyke for God's sake. <laughs> Very cute. It's just really cool, too, how he just looks in the Yeah. And then, well, this goes on for a while, but he's, he oh, gets down among them. Yeah, he looks yeah. good for ninety. Damn, dude. He really does. He doesn't look too far off. Uh, the last thing I saw him. Dude. Yeah, he sounds good. Happy birthday! He does. Yeah, he's got the pipes. He's not. Uh, Rolling around in a wheelchair or anything? I mean, he's holding up. Who knew? We should all be so lucky. And that is Danica's heart, heartwarming moment. Yeah. Show tech show. <laughs> we won't even next that one. We'll Aww. just we'll show some respect and uh, transition gracefully into our topic for tonight. Thanks, Dick. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> Back to you, Scott. Um, well, I wanted to talk about Windows 10. Is that uh, too too nerdy, or do you want to? Uh, <laughs> Scott, do you have thoughts on <laughs> Windows 10? Not a fan? We can edit that in post. Yeah, all right. Damn, <laughs> brother. We can edit that in post. My ears out. out. <laughs> Microsoft. Microsoft. Ah. Get Bill Gates in here. He promised Windows 98 would be faster. <laughs> better Excuse access me. to the internet. Bless you. <laughs> spent $600 wire and the worked for two and now it doesn't even oh, All because like of Windows 10. Would you like to tell tell them more about your Windows 10 experience with QuickBooks? Oh my God! Yeah, my <laughs> no. QuickBooks is shut down. Can't use it. Just it's bought that compatible. too. So bought that last year. Yeah, this is my concern about Windows 10. I mean, there's some they're giving it away. The, yeah. It's and if you're like, on seven or eight, yeah. they're, they're we're like, giving it away because it doesn't work. Yeah, it's yeah. I can see them not charging for this product, but it's <laughs> one of those classic. Here, you Windows want this for free? <laughs> you can roll it in a freaking blunt and smoke it for all I care. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure on consumers to get this because if you're on a Windows Seven machine or you're on a Windows Eight machine, you're getting this little pop up nag box that yeah, says, "Hey, go nag. ahead and get it. Go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get hey, it." It's listen. like hey, so people listen. are literally upgrading just to shut it up. Basically, like, all right, whatever, just you know. And there doesn't really seem to... I've been doing some research, and... What's the verdict? Th I mean, well, I think Scott makes a pretty good what? case for <laughs> stay the hell away. Um, what does the I'll, I'll be the devil's advocate. Uh, I'll say they have introduced... Uh, so this is the, uh, the concept of Windows 10. It unifies their desktop and their uh, mobile... Yeah, their tablet-based mm -hmm. stuff, which um, I don't know if Windows Phone is going to go anywhere, but this is sort of something Apple's doing as well. Their iOS and their OS are, are slowly merging together. Windows just cut to the chase and said, okay, boom, they're identical. Um, when Windows 8 tried to tease this, people really hated it and said, no, yeah. F this, we want our desktop back. So that's basically what Windows 10 does is it says, okay, it's Windows 8, but now it's got a desktop instead of this chiclet well, button and thing. And see, I really hated Windows 8 when I first, because I had to get a, my old computer died, so I got a new laptop. Yeah. And it happened to have Windows 8, and I was like, crap. I'm going to hate this. And, you know, I've actually really just started to like it. I mean, because... Eight, what? Yeah. Yes. They have a desktop portion that you can click on, and it shows you... Yeah. It, it's like a normal desktop. So, uh... Quick books work? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's still on eight. Mine sure as fuck doesn't. 
to me, the, the transition between Windows 7 and Windows 8 wasn't awful. What Windows 8 offered was native uh, touchscreen control. It, and that's what actually what I did integrate our uh, yeah, in my laptop Wirecast to machine. Screen. Yeah. Here's so if you've got touch, it makes sense. Here's the thing. QuickBooks will run on Windows 10. Yeah. There is an ad built into it that every time you start it, it says, this is not compatible with Windows 10. Yeah. Now, you can sit there and run your stuff and all that. Now, I can't run my printer at all. Yeah. You know, a $600 piece of equipment that I went just went and bought, which is now useless. Um, but, you know, this, this, is, this is just a Microsoft ploy to make more money. And it's crossing over into everything else. They're tied in with QuickBooks, into it. All these companies are tied together. All they're trying to do is get more money out of you. Yeah, well, the one and again, thing. they're giving it away, so they're not trying to make money on 10, but I think you're uh, right. They're trying to Go make Apple, this because guess what? I've got programs in Apple that I bought 15 years ago, and I can still run it now. Well, and the reverse is true. Like, at work, we've got a, uh, it's a 2009 iMac. So this thing is every bit of seven years old, and um, it did finally, the hard drive died, so we went in and replaced the hard drive. They rolled it up to the newest version of the OS for free. Um, there you it's go. It's running Final Cut 10, the latest build of that, flawlessly every day. It's like got four gigs of RAM, but I mean, it's a, it's it's an old ass machine by any stretch of the imagination. We're frequently editing high definition video on it, flawlessly every I day. I mean, I mean, it's a good product. Me, me this is yeah, Windows 10. Uh, so look, okay, uh, bef before we go down, I was going to try to say these are the reasons that Windows 10 may be compelling to some people, according to Microsoft Direct. Blah. Blah, blah. I was yeah. going to say, blah. a lot of people want it for the HoloLens. I don't know if you've heard about that. Yeah, HoloLens, but that, again, is still kind of a mobile... Yeah, platform. Right? Yeah, I mean, for your desktop computer, for your laptop, eh, yeah. maybe, maybe not. I mean, some of these hybrids. But anyway, th what they have built in is Cortana, which is basically the Siri, <laughs> the uh, Apple... This is the voice-guided oh, AI oh. that kind of helps you search things. No word yet on Theory. how great... Yeah, I mean, these none of these are good. Not, pretty much all of these I are like... I don't even use Siri. Siri used to be awesome. She's you would ask her random she, questions. Yeah, she, she would be a bitch. Answer. And she would be a bitch She would give it. you creative yeah. answers. And now she, now she just Googles it. Nothing. And it's kind of like, come on, Siri. Here are the results. Thanks, so, But anyway, that, that is built in. Uh, so I'm sure Gary Busey is going to be very excited about that. According to his last Fire TV commercial, he was really amped up about the voice activation. So anyway, Cortana is built into this thing. They've also got the new Edge browser, which replaces the uh, Internet Explorer that nobody's been using for about five years. <laughs> uh, Edge browser gives you some neat annotation tools and sharing. I did hear that they're in. finally getting rid of. Internet. Yeah, that's okay. what this is. This yeah. is this is what well, finally what Edge is puts the dagger. To do. I.e. Um, the the there's still problems with that. Yeah, so. I mean it's just it's a slightly more advanced browser, but it's probably going to have the same pitfalls as Internet Explorer never could get right. So, um, it's got an integrated antivirus program now. For a while, Microsoft has been giving uh, security essentials away for free. This is actually baked right into the software, so you can't not install it. So it's kind of going one step beyond even mm. uh, like the Apple computers who were always somehow a uh, virus proof just because nobody bothered to write viruses for Apple computers. Windows were always the hard target for virus makers. So now they've just said, you know what? Screw it. We understand that we're going to get attacked constantly. So Scott, are you having a, uh, a general quarters we need to be aware <laughs> of over there? <laughs> that iPhone? Yeah. Anyway, so, so, those are th so those are what the advantages are. And if you look at it, that's really not much of a change over you know, going from 7 to 10, arguably, that adds a lot of touch functionality again. But, like, on my day-to-day -day laptop that was built four years ago, there's no touch screen. Absolutely useless. That was to you. Oh, that's uh -uh. a group text. You guys want to take this? We'll just, no. oh. we'll just dip out. <laughs> yeah, no, no. but um, seriously, so that, I mean, those are, those are what... You're expected to migrate for that, and the other advantage is finally getting that nagware to go away, where it's not yelling at you to upgrade. But that's, Scott, the story you're telling is what I'm hearing left and right all over the internet, and maybe that's just because so people complain more than, than promote, but I mean, well, I, mean I bought Vectorworks. Driver issues, I compatibility issues. You can't you. afford to shut down your workflow if this is your business machine. It's oh, yeah. not worth it to upgrade to this. If you're buying a new computer, I mean, yeah, Don't 10's probably it. built in, but I mean... I bought Vectorworks with Spotlight <laughs> four years ago. 
Okay. And uh, that cost me twenty four hundred dollars, twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, then I bought QuickBooks, which was five hundred bucks. Then I bought uh, uh, the the I'm probably probably four or five grand out right now, business wise. Business in, in because stuff it's that not I compatible. can't even use. Yeah, the the vector works won't even fire up. It's like. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. You can find hey, you copies remember of that Windows, Windows XP CD I stole from stole from you. Yeah, yeah, I I had to. Use Did you roll back that? Well, I mean that's the thing is Windows XP. It's probably not a viable option anymore because it's not supported by the company. If you're running Windows XP, you've got a virus on your machine that it can't detect, and they don't really care that you can't detect. And Thirteen Russians are exploiting. 13. Um, I don't care. I've got. Got it on my Vectorworks computer that's not hooked up to the right. Mic, but yeah, I'm if it's a business to, machine, if it's I'm a able to lighting draw board or whatever, I mean, new stuff. I mean, but it's sad that I've spent <sighs> yeah thousands of dollars on new laptops and and desktops and can't use half of my software. Yeah, it's the, and perhaps they'll I mean, solve it, it. But this is the fundamental difference between you Apple computers and Windows Microsoft computers. Microsoft on this one. Yeah. Well. I it's did not mean to get into this topic to rile you up. No. I mainly it's a it's a word of warning to people because if this is your production machine, if this is your lifeline to business, you're fucked, dude. It's not worth this upgrade. And it's it's kind of heavy handed the way it's insisting that you do upgrade to it you for don't no need reason. To look at it. I wish we had your uh, phones piped into the system so we could get these little uh Ding. Yeah. I, I you know, I used <laughs> I to fight to with Jordan. Microphone. I, I fought with Jordan for 10 years about how I thought Apple sucked. And oh, yeah. I, I still don't have an Apple well, product. Well, other than my iPhone. It's, it's, easier, it's increasingly easy to see why Apple people are fanboys. Because it just works. It doesn't do much, but it works pretty <laughs> reliably. I mean, That's the thing. You turn it on, you know that you're going to be able to draw your plot. You know that you're be- yeah. going to be able to print it. And it's it's like an appliance, which uh, that's the society that we're in nowadays. You have a piece of electronics, not so it can be one device that does a million things. You have a toaster. You have a microwave. You have an yeah. email box. You have an Apple TV. You know, n- you don't need one giant mega machine that does everything. Microsoft. It's the Internet of Things. Microsoft people. is just as big of a company as Apple. Yeah. Correct. Would you agree with that? I th- I'm sure they're bigger. I'm we sure just they're had far larger. We actually. just had an iOS update. On Last the night. Apple iPhones. Yesterday. Um, I think uh, mine was like three days ago. Yeah. But um, just did an iPhone update. They are so caring about their customers. Almost every one of my apps was updated a day later yeah. to fix anything that was... They, I mean, a lot of a lot of that is uh, with with developers. Apple is also very heavy-handed. Um, it's it's you know you with Microsoft, they're begging people to develop for their platforms. With Apple, they're refusing people. They're saying, oh, "I'm sorry, you're not good enough, Twitter. You're gonna have to rework it, or else we're not gonna put you in the App Store." Mm-hmm. And it's fucking Twitter. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. <laughs> you know, I, they they have the sway where they can do that. They control the economy, and people. <laughs> some people don't like that sandbox. Some people don't like that restrictiveness. But at the end of the day, it makes a product that works. You've got both. You've got Apple. Right. You've got HP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we had to reboot uh, the Windows machine Boop. midway through Boop. tonight's broadcast, if that tells you anything. Uh, and at work, I'm using a seven-year-old computer that, you know, finally had to have a hundred-dollar hard drive replaced. So, I mean, as far in terms of reliability, I don't think you have any excuse not to own an Apple machine. Cost of ownership's higher, um, mm-hmm. but I think it's going to the durability is going to more than pay for that. I think the durability is You'll there. go through four yeah. Windows machines in the same amount of time you'll I go through one Apple. I money. think the fact that you walk into Capital's an hard. iStore. Capital campaign. You go there into you go. an Apple Kick store with your, with your <laughs> iMac. Help Danica. <laughs> they're there to help Give you. me money. Yep. And that's what I did, too. That was the great part, too. I mean, this thing was not in warranty. I didn't have any receipts. I didn't have anything. I walked into a genius. I made an, I made a, you know, an appointment on my phone. Walked I walked in. in they looked at it and like did they plugged it into a USB you know, mm-hmm. their private network. They ran some proprietary it's things. Like, yep, it's broke. All right, <laughs> we'll have this back to you in about two business weeks. And I was like, uh, you know, well, it is what it is. I can't go buy a fifteen hundred dollar new one. So here's, you know, we'll do that. They called me up the next day. It was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Fully upgraded. It was like I bought a new iMac for two hundred 
two hundred bucks to get tax. The one thing though that I will say on Apple is like with iPhones or iPads or whatever, um, make great pornos. Anyways, just leave that. Um, just leave that. <laughs> if you don't have, <laughs> if you don't have, a, a, if you don't buy the warranty or whatever, and your <sighs> screen cracks, yep, they won't. I mean, you have to pay the fee. Yeah. Okay. Unless but you find the right person in the right Apple store. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, that's true. Yes, that is what cases are for. But in the <laughs> Who wants I to don't have care a case? about the case. that you, you see this ordered, phone? Yes. This isn't the iPhone I bought. I bought an iPhone 6. I it broke. Success. It was out of warranty. I went to the Apple store. They said, we don't have the machinery to collaborate or to calibrate this, the new screen. The screen. So we'll give you a new phone for fifty bucks. But that wasn't you broke it and dropped the uh, you dropped the screen and broke it. You, this this was something just screwed up. It was a factory defect no. or flaw. No, he did broke you sit it. on it? Uh, no, you bastard. <laughs> Kristen dropped it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, and I will say I walked in. Yeah. I, I walked in. Really I went, bad. It's like, broke, and they went, "Oh yeah, that's broke." That I will say I I mean good. I have a screen protector on my phone, but I'm super super bad about dropping my phone. Yeah. And so that is just the one thing is like. I don't want Where is your case? It's back ordered. Cases. Didn't I talk to you about but this? But the cool thing, I Get will do a product case. placement here. What yeah, I have like we're getting paid for Apple commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Bull. Hold on. Both hold her on, and I have just the same thing. Hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. The screen protector that I have on my phone is called Cinder. You can literally drop it Stupid. from the second story of a building. Oh, wow. Or chop vegetables on it, and it will not break the actual glass on your iPhone. Does it do anything to mar the image? Because actually, my wife is in the market for. Uh, we just started uh, Apple Pie since we're talking about cell and phones. And it's super easy to put on. You literally, you know, after you clean the phone or mm -hmm. whatever, um, and they send you, you when you too? buy the. Yeah, it's not polarized. So when you, you buy the protector, you they send it. you all the tools to, okay. to apply it. And they give you, like, the stuff so you can take it off if it gets dirty or whatever to clean it. You literally put it on, mask <coughs> it up, press in the center, and it self-adheres. Oh, that's cool. Now, yeah. here's... You here, have to you push away the bubbles the, that might occur. Yeah. You can see the that bubbling at anything. the top now. But sure, but, yeah, this is fine. You can't even tell there's but something But you can take it off and reapply it and right. get rid of those bubbles. And it's like a Gorilla Glass kind of thing that's... Uh, it, it, Nuclear yes, proof. It's, it's like it's there's a YouTube a video where guy piece there's a guy who tests <laughs> iPhone screens. That's like what he does for a living. And, and he's just messing with it, trying he to. He like it throws out. hammers at it. He like drops it. He puts it in water. Huh. He it cuts is, vegetables on it. This thing passed the test. It is two okay. thin sheets of glass with a piece of of uh, almost Kevlar plastic in the middle. We're living in the future, guys. And it, oh. it's just, I mean, it is. When I was at the the Apple store, the guy had a demonstration of it, and he took a hammer and smashed. Yeah. Wow. Bam. That's pretty front. bold. And That's got I the Napoleon like, Dynamite well, Tupperware scene written all over I mean, do more than Dang just it. that test, because there was a screen protector that I got before this that did the same thing. The lady put it on. She hit it with the hammer. It cracked the screen protector, but the glass didn't break. All right. What's your stuff called, Danica? What is this? I'll Cinder. C-I-N-D-E-R. Uh-huh. Um, but that screen protector that I got, I had dropped my phone. It was actually the Tech Week of Witness. Yeah. And it fell on the side, and it cracked the screen protector, and I thought it was just a screen protector. I was like, oh, cool. And then, um, nope, it wasn't. It cracked the glass. 20 bucks on Indiegogo. <clears throat> There's the hammer test. Very dispassionate I mean, like, look, test. it's not even cracking. Yeah, this looks like it's photoshopped almost. <laughs> but there, there, <laughs> this is great television. <laughs> there's a guy on YouTube who, who actually tests these live. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is just the product ad from them, so you'd imagine that it's going to be pretty... It's a little biased. So, oh, there you go. They're showing some crackage. There. We broke your phone. Psych! Wait. New phone. So my wife, so she just got, we're, we're on uh, Google's Project Fi now, which is their cell phone plan that Google's starting to sell. And so part of the bit was we had to buy a new phone out of pocket for that. So she's very concerned about 
not having it fall into the toilet or get destroyed because she's kind of on the hook for it now versus uh, um, in the past where we've been able to, you know, basically take it back to the store and upgrade like you guys are talking about. Um, have you guys seen that uh, the dipping that they do like at the malls and stuff? Yes! The, to make it waterproof. Not waterproof, but very water resistant. Very water resistant, yeah. yeah it seals all the cracks and... It's basically a silicone dip that you can... Yeah, it seems like that would be interesting. It makes me a little nervous, though. But they say that it's thick enough to where it won't seep through cracks. But still, that just kind of... I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah. The one thing, the one thing that I do want... I want to find a case... A case? That is not... As thick as the other box. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, the other that's, box that was is always my go to. But yes, it does its job, but I'm sorry. It's too bulky. If you're it making calls from Afghanistan, a sure. It will not fit in my pocket. It wouldn't fit in my pocket. Holy hell. Those <laughs> things are they're, they're beasts. It turns it in. Like, I had my and first smartphone don't, in don't a. I want that. Plus, the other I'm thing is, there's a let reason you know where why I, store my I got box. the rose gold. Yeah. The rose gold. You want to show it Because I like the color. An otter box doesn't make a rose gold. I do. It reminds me of my one of my favorite songs by one of my favorite acapella groups. <laughs> but anyways. Well, right. um, so Windows 10. So Windows 10. Worst Sucks. cell phone ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say don't buy for what it's worth from uh, Show Tech Show. We are not recommending Windows 10 as an experience for any of you producers out there yet. Uh, we'll see that them. may change. They may develop. They may have more driver support down the road. But that's the thing with Windows. It's always kind of like, uh, don't be an early adopter. And when they're forcing the market or or see encouraging the less savvy market to be early adopters, I think they're going to have a lot of angry people out there. So you're seeing it they live. <laughs> you got a lot of angry people here. Come on yes. over to my house. Scott's making me nervous. Come on over to my house, Windows. Um. Well. That's I all I've got. Drive my Jeep Cherokee right in front of your car. Would that uh, I guess I threat will end on that? No, unless you guys have anything else you want to throw down for uh, show notes and news and stuff. Shit, I gotta go to work. So. You gotta get out of here to work. Yeah, uh, we're loading in tonight over at the Upcom. I will share my more my other news next time. Oh well, wait, we can do more news if you want. I'm sorry, I didn't kind of. Well, yeah, what I didn't news? even. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll just plug real quick and yeah. just say uh, stay tuned for DB Designs, my sound design company. We've got some exciting news coming up. Very excited to hear I more about that. Yeah. I can't say details yet because we haven't announced Okay, so I wasn't cutting you off. You were just teasing news from no, me. No, teasing. Okay, yeah. okay. I was like, oh, but, I'm sorry. Um, I totally railroaded you. Typical Sunday. female. Teasing. Oh, right. Anyway, so next tune Sunday. in next Sunday. I'll probably be able to re reveal more, but I'm super excited. So you can catch me on Facebook. Oh, yeah. At uh, DB Designs. DB Designs. And you can catch us on Facebook thanks to your handiwork. We are the Showtech Show on Facebook. Showtech the Showtech. only one. The one you need to know. Yes. So uh, like us, share it, tell yeah, all your friends. Spread the word. That's, that's what the people are at. So uh, we're there, too. Uh, but we're also on Twitter, and uh, you can follow show updates and when we go live and uh, just interesting tidbits here and there. We're Show Tech Show on the Twitters. At Show Tech Show. At Show Tech Show. And uh, we do have an email address. If you're on email, you can send us a message at showtechshow at frontiertelevision.com. We do uh, look forward to those, and we will incorporate we them on the air. We never read them, but we look forward to them. Did we get through this tonight? Uh, no. no. We don't get through <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool, though. Tweet us. Yeah, absolutely. We're totally uh, about being interactive and shit. So, um, also, <laughs> I do believe I have a replacement person for me for next week. Oh, the really? People, huh? I have a board oh. meeting. Oh, that is boring. And I will be on the Well, I'll be leaving that said meeting. Well, Here. okay. My Santa hat. Well, I have a different board. Meeting. I have a column awards board meeting. Oh. Excellent. Yes, we will be doing some and uh, we will column do awards. Be doing the announcement. January, and we right? will be doing that is the announcements yeah. here in January. Uh, I do believe it's January 19th, isn't it? Uh, 17th. 17th. January 17th. January 17th. 17th. Is is we might kick it Mystery Science Theater 3000. Uh-huh. We might. 
I we could do, do that. Believe, yeah. <laughs> I do believe we're going to have a mini show tech show segment in between the uh, acting awards and the nomination award. and the technical awards. Yeah, so. give those those folks a chance to uh, take a little breather. We'll we'll get in and, and fill in. So before our mini show tech show, from hell. catch up on YouTube. YouTube. Yes, thank you. dot com slash TV Lone Star Show Tech Show playlist. And that is. We'll also uh, post it on our Facebook. That's true. Yeah. So. Synergy, right, guys? That's yes. how we keep it all oh. flowing together. <laughs> That's all we've got sure for another shit, uh, Microsoft. Another <laughs> yes, <laughs> Microsoft need not apply. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate you being here and uh, checking out the show. And uh, tell your friends. We will see you next show tech show. See you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>